This is June 3rd, 2013. I'm here at the corner of my garden and uh, planting four rows of corn here. This is open pollinated corn, field corn. A friend of mine in, in Belleville, Pennsylvania, Big Valley, got me this. The, uh, the Amish farmers up there in, in Belleville have been planting this stuff for I don't know, 100, 150 years. It's open pollinated. They just save the seed and keep out the best ears and and uh, plant that for seed for next the next year. So he got me some of this. I'm going to try a little patch here in the corner of the garden and see how it does this summer. Well, it's July 19th and this is my open pollinated corn I uh, planted back at the beginning of June. It's grown pretty nice. We've had good weather. I planted uh, two seeds about every foot, 10 inches or so. Looks like almost every every seed germinated. Stuff's really getting leggy, and uh, don't know if it'll stand very well or not. But looks like it's just starting to push a tassel out. Yeah, there's the tassel. So we'll see what kind of ears we get off of it. Check back in another month or so. It's October 7th and uh, I'm gonna pick my open pollinated corn here today. Um, back in June I planted it and uh, had to water it a couple times this summer. It got uh, pretty dry here in July and parts of August. I did water it some, but I had planted it pretty thick. Um, about every kernel I planted uh, germinated and came up, so it's it's uh, pretty thick. The rows are about two feet apart, and uh, some of this in here in the center you can see didn't even put on any ear. There's a little one up there, there's a little one, and as is often the case with uh, open pollinated corn, the standability is a little bit of a problem, it gets really leggy and tall and a lot of times the ears are set real high. Um, yeah, right in here there's one, that ear is up there about six and a half feet, there's one big old thick ear up at least six feet and uh, yeah we'll just have to pick it here and see what we get with uh, open pollinated corn it's not like hybrids with hybrids you have real consistent genetics to have uh, pretty much the uh, same ge genetics in every kernel with open pollinated corn everyone's a little bit different depends on the on the parentage. So uh, yeah, I'll pull this off and see what it looks like. I, had, I already pulled some ears off and make some pretty impressive long ears. That didn't fill out real good clear to the back, but okay, I'll pick some of this and then show you what we get. Okay, so I pulled it all off. I have four rows here. And then I laid them all out there the way they came off. So obviously the outside rows did better. The side uh, towards the south there, south and east sort of did a good bit better than the others. But I don't know. It looks like the the thing this shows here is that open pollinated corn has genetic diversity. If you'd go in a regular cornfield with hybrid corn, all the ears would be very similar, not much variation, but I don't know, in here we have these long skinny ones, that thing's over a foot long, probably only has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve rows, had some up here, I think this one here had eighteen rows, that's a foot long or so, had a red one, had some of them that 
looks like they had some pollination problems. Have some that are super thick, big old things. Probably has a super thick cob too. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to husk out an ear and get something like that. Show it off to your farmer friends. So yeah, with uh, open pollinated corn, you just can save the seed, save the seed from the best ears, and plant again next year. So hybrid corn, you can't do that. Hybrid corn won't uh, produce true to seed. So there's my little experiment with open pollinated corn. Again, I think I probably told you in the earlier video, but uh, this corn came from Belleville, Pennsylvania, where the Amish up there have been planting it for. I don't know, 100, 150 years. A friend of mine got me some seed and I thought I'd try it here in the corner of the garden this year.